Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending December the 10th, 2021. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, a little bit late on that uh, from last week, but I uh, hope everybody's having a great holiday season. So the story this week, so much Omicron noise, uh, but really the data that's coming back is uh, indicating that the vaccines are extremely robust against uh, uh, prevention and the disease is not as lethal as the uh, Delta variant of the COVID-19. So and other indications are that we're leaving the pandemic stage and, and emerging into the endemic stage, which is good news long term for humanity generally. And uh, the bad news is, is that uh, the uh, Fed, uh, FOMC, we're waiting on them in the next few days to make an announcement on, on, on rate and rate hikes. They seem to be hawkish, but it's still, that was enough news. Uh, for equities to go ahead and, and, and bump up again today for the moment, and then there was some profit taking. So a lot of noise going on, but it's mainly geared around this inflation uh, trade and the inflation concerns because uh, we're seeing the break-even trade, uh, you know, between two and a half and and two eight. So you know, right around that three percent range between two and a half and three percent. But the real uh, tangible inflation is that everyone's feeling is housing, food, and transportation, and that's 6.8 percent. So the break-even trade is down the road, but the uh, the real inflation that we're feeling right now is right in front of us. Uh, that's not slowing down the Christmas shopping. So retail sector is a good sector to be in. Uh, it, it would appear at this point, and that, and and those earnings will be reported, uh, you know, next month, obviously. But here's the thing: is that uh, as labor um, is, uh, is, is not quite participating in wage increases, but the other, uh, um, that may be a good thing because uh, while we have to take the bite right now, the economy, uh, it may, uh, may be better off in the long run because the velocity of the money would not increase as much as if wages go up too, then you've got prices and wages, and that's going to increase the velocity of the money in the system. So. Uh, the thing to be concerned about is that these low rates persist and the bond trade is what it eventually translates into. And you've still got 10 years that were in the 130s at the beginning of the week and then, and then uh, hung out in the 140s most of this week. So trying to get back into 150s right now, but, but uh, that's, that's where that has been for months now. And so the yield group for bonds generally, that fixed income component of your portfolio, is simply not going to be there. And, and I put to you with a $30 trillion trade deficit, the Fed is not going to be able to raise rates. They, they'll be able to raise rates uh, to the point of, tape, of, of getting out of the stimulus package that they had created. But bond, uh, as we've known them, I don't believe are going to be existent, at least for the uh, uh, part of retirement planning that we're focusing on, uh, you know, in the next 10 to 15 years, it just does not there. And so, especially if you're already uh, five years in uh, or away from retirement or, or already started retirement, if you're into retirement, that bond trade is just not there. So we have to look for alternatives. We have those alternatives over here, all right? So it's a matter of education, and I think that's what we're going to be doing here for the next several weeks is educating and talking about uh, until we can get back in the classroom uh, next uh, uh, winter uh, after the holiday break, uh, talking about the bond alternatives that we do have and why they are a feasible uh, mix to come back in and replace those non-yielding, non-performing uh, especially if inflation uh, hangs around uh, the conventional bonds that are in place. So there's better ways to address this. We simply need to be in uh, place to be able to speak to them. So let's start just by saying, if there's no yield in conventional bonds, then what do we have to do? Well, right now, in order to get the type of yield that you want, you have to take on too much risk. And you either have to take on too much risk in the bond markets, or if you just hop out of there, you have to get into uh, um, alternatives in the equities, equities markets to make up for that component. Okay, Generally, that's going to be 40% of a portfolio, conventional portfolios. It could be 40 to 50% of an average retiree type portfolio. You cannot afford to take that kind of risk either in the conventional bond market or in the, in the equity alternatives, at least not straight up exposures. That's too much risk. 
for most people, for the majority of people, unless you have a tremendous portfolio already and then you can afford to play the casino game. Most people aren't like that, okay? So what do we do? Well, if your other alternatives that are going to give you some sort of uh, a consistent yield are tied up in, in uh, things like real estate and that type of uh, investment, those trades turn out to be good looking on the front end, extremely illiquid on the long end, and that doesn't bode well for uh, retirees or for retirement planning. Retirement planning is a specific type of specialized uh, uh, analysis, okay? It's not just as many of our colleagues that are just straight in the equities market would want to say is just, you know, accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. That doesn't get you where you need to be. The decumulation strategy, the spending, the spend down, the decumulation, that's where the art of the deal is in this arena. And that's what we are uh, experts on. That's what we have become accustomed to, to delving into and finding a win for our clients. So that's about as long as we're going to be able to go this week. Continue to have a happy holiday season and stay happy yourselves. And I'll see you again next time, next week, all right? Take care.